Israel Hamas war has entered day 23. Gaza's 2.3 million residents were largely cut off from the outside world after Israel's long promised ground offensive began. Now, Israeli forces launched a full blown attack on Hamas from all the fronts by increasing its ground, sea, as well as air attack on the Palestinian enclave. Large explosives were witnessed in the Gaza skyline as Israeli jets dropped more bombs. Several Hamas targets in the northern as well as central part of Gaza, including underground tunnels, combat spaces, additional underground infrastructure, were all, were all destroyed by Israeli airstrikes. In fact, a large number of IDF troops as well as a big column of tanks were also seen on the north Gaza border. Making sure that they destroy Hamas and also securing their borders, Israeli chief of staff went on to say that the military is now moving into the next stage of the Israel-Hamas war. למלחמה הזו יש שלבים, היום אנחנו עוברים שלב. כוחות שלנו מבצעים כעת פעילות קרקעית ברצועת עזה. הפעילות הזו מלווה על ידי אש מדויקת וכבדה. אלה נועדו לשרת את כל מטרות המלחמה. פירוק חמאס, ביטחון בגבולות ומאמץ עליון להשבת כל החטופים הביתה. lies and uh, the allegation of the occupation regarding uh, a Shifa hospital. We want to say that uh, Shifa hospital is a hospital for, for treatment, for medical purposes, and it, not, it is not used for Hamas leaders or military leaders. It is just for, for the uh, medical and for health treatment for our people in Gaza Strip. I think this is kind of of excuses for the, uh, the occupation in order to target the uh, hospital and to make more massacres, more slaughters against, against our civilians in Gaza Strip. Now joining me live is my colleague Shiv Arur, who's been reporting from Israel from the front line over the past 10 days. Shiv, we, have, we can see that the big ground attack has started. How is it going to escalate in coming days? There's been absolutely no let up uh, in the uh, ground assault as well as the aerial assault. Uh, we've spent many hours here uh, on the absolute front line, the closest point uh, to the Gaza uh, fence uh, from Israel. This is just uh, south of uh, Sderu. Uh, and I can tell you that um, not even for a not even for a span of about 10 seconds has there not been uh, the sound there you go the, you know the sound of either either tank fire or machine gu gun fire or uh, air strikes or rifle fire uh, you know the constant hum of drones the constant roar of uh, fighter craft uh, f uh, fighter aircraft in the air uh, we've uh, personally if, uh, uh, you know viewers who've been watching our coverage have seen the uh, visuals that I've uh, sent in from here personally we've uh, spotted uh, F-15 fighters, F-16 fighters, an Apache helicopter. Uh, we've seen a Hermes 900 drone buzzing, you know, near incessantly, uh, probably conducting battle damage as well as acquiring targets. Uh, and all of this is, uh, you know, from the air and from the ground. Uh, we haven't been able to spot, even though, uh, you know, behind me you can see a huge wall of smoke as a result of the relentless, uh, uh, you know, ground and air attacks on the Gaza Strip in the northern part. Uh, but we haven't spotted the tank columns just yet. They probably, uh, you know, a little further in. We've we've heard the rumbling of the tank columns. Uh, even even from here, even from this distance, we can hear the uh, tanks. We can certainly hear their firing, both by their primary and secondary weapons. Uh, but I imagine that the next step is going to be an escalation. It's going to be more, probably more tanks, probably more uh, uh, armored personnel carriers, uh, and most certainly more airstrikes. Uh, this entire northern part, this is the northeastern uh, tip of the Gaza Strip that we're standing at, uh, right outside uh, that, that corner, uh, and there's nothing left. If you, if, you know, when we when we arrived here. Uh, there was a skyline visible, now it's just a complete smoke-filled hellscape. So uh, clearly the Israeli Defense Forces have decided that this is that critical phase. Phase one is over, that was only air power, now it's about ground operations and I think over the last 10 to 12 hours we've been a uh, direct witness of that. Shiv, the ground invasion has started but the big question on everyone's mind is what about the hostages that were taken on the 7th of October? 
you know, that continues to be the crucial question over 225 uh, hostages. Uh, you know, some say the number is 229 hostages, uh, you know, continue be continue to be inside uh, the Gaza Strip. Some of them may even be in the sectors uh, that you see right behind me. Uh, there's no, there's, there is no information apart from, you know, a, a, a few posts on social media that the Hamas had put out uh, in the early days after the attack. Uh, nothing more is known. They put out a video, remember, of a girl. Uh, they had an image of a man, you know, tied up and bound uh, but nothing else is known about the condition of the hostages uh, you know where they've been kept are they all kept in one place highly likely that it's not they've probably been distributed uh, in different places to reduce the risk of them, them being found by Israel's special forces who uh, you know as I've been reporting have entered both from the north and the middle uh, not just uh, you know to eliminate uh, Hamas terrorists but also uh, if possible to rescue the hostages because that's been a huge priority the country okay so like I said I mean just just to prove my point there's this constant bombardment uh, punctuating pretty much everything that we're seeing and hearing uh, over here um, at the northern tip of the Gaza Strip so we're going to continue to report uh, no clue yet about the uh, hostages uh, okay okay those are definitely definitely precision guided munitions uh, landing from uh, Israeli fighter aircraft um, uh, that we're standing not very far from. So we're going to move away to safety in a little bit, but uh, uh, just to just to complete that thought about the hostages, uh, the tunnel network is possibly being used more and more at this time because the Israeli fighter aircraft are pounding the absolute hell out of uh, subterranean structures. They're using bunker buster, uh, you know, bombs and warheads which have penetration devices which are able to, you know, go into the ground and then explode to destroy tunnels. Uh, the Israeli Defense Forces have said that they've been using sponge bombs as well uh, in, uh, you know, to destroy tunnels. So all of that act activity is happening uh, in the Gaza Strip behind me. So like you just heard in that series of explosions, there's no, there's going to be no let up. And this is only an appetizer. The sense we're getting is that this is only an appetizer. Thank you very much, Shiv, for giving us all those details. Shiv Arur has been reporting from the ground, the closest to the Gaza border, and getting us the latest with regards to the Israel-Hamas war. Now, India Today continues to get you the latest that's taking place in this war. Now, as Israel launched an expanded ground operation on Saturday, they've increased the bombardment and also increased the artillery firing along the border. Shiv Arur gets you the report from the war zone, decoding the weapons that are now being used in this war. Uh, from where we're reporting uh, at the northern en end of Gaza, you can see behind me two big plumes of smoke. They're both from uh, airstrikes that have probably happened from either fighters or from gunships. I wanted to quickly uh, run you, the viewer, through uh, you know everything that we've seen happen here in just the last couple of hours. I just spotted an, an AH-64 Apache gunship uh, flying overhead. It's been buzzing the place a couple of times. It's likely uh, been conducting operations over Gaza. We're not sure if not sure if uh, either one of those plumes of smoke uh, is from a precision attack from that gunship uh, but it's very likely to be even though uh, we've spotted um, quite a few fighters buzzing overhead you can rarely see them they're flying very high because remember the Hamas uh, does have a limited air defense capability they've been supplied uh, IGLA and IGLA S uh, shoulder fired uh, short air uh, short-range air defense systems uh, by Iran uh, and they've procured some systems from Russia as well uh, and therefore the Israeli Air Force tends to fly its jets very very high to use its laser guided uh, munitions uh, by and large using the joint direct attack munition which is an American weapon system uh, laser guided GPS guided uh, to attack Hamas positions here in northern Gaza apart from that the M109 uh, artillery guns which we've seen practicing uh, you know along the stretch of the Gaza frontage uh, through the through the week uh, uh, they've gone off practice mode and as you can hear them booming even in the background now they're in active firing mode uh, other than that uh, you, uh, the very familiar sound of the secondary weapon of the Merkava tanks which is a 12.7 millimeter uh, machine gun uh, that's the that's the sound you hear uh, frequently punctuating the shells and the bombings that are happening uh, behind me so this is the full strength really of the Israeli Air Force it has bigger weapons it hasn't brought them in just yet uh, but these these are the ones to be expected at this point of time. Uh, even while this airstrike 
uh, uh, campaign at this point was taking place and it certainly is visibly and audibly an escalatory uh, step by the Israeli Defense Forces. We saw a rocket uh, be intercepted not very far from where we're reporting at this point of time. So behind us, the northern part of the Gaza Strip, two airstrikes already while we've been here reporting over the last couple of hours and near non-stop pounding with shells and precision weapons. In southern Israel, on the Gaza frontage, Shiva Roof for India Today.